In this video, I'll show you how to boost your critical thinking with decision trees. Besides machine learning, decision trees work wonders for managers, business owners, investors and prospective homeowners. No surprise McKinsey, BCG, Bain and leading tech companies love decision trees so much. Let us see how decision trees work. Suppose you have a complex problem. You need to design a new product feature, introduce performance reviews to your team, choose an investment target or even buy a house. Structured thinking, which is basically a fancy phrase for decision tree growing, is the process of breaking down this problem into many smaller tangible sub-problems, dealing with each problem and then assembling a solution. Here is how it works. <laughs> Oops, sorry, I messed up the slides. Here's how it works. Let us start with a simple example. Suppose there are two kids in a family. One kid is a boy. What is the probability that the other kid is a girl? The answer seems to be 50%, but it does not use all the information that we have. We can do better with structured thinking. Let us draw a tree diagram and decompose the problem into mutually exclusive cases. With a probability of 50%, the first kid born to the family was a boy, and with the same 50%, it was a girl. Each case breaks down further into two subcases. Regardless of the gender of the first child, the second child is a girl with a 50% probability or a boy with the same 50% probability. As a result, we have four possible cases. A boy and a boy, a boy and a girl, a girl and a boy, and a girl and a girl. The probability of each case is 25%. According to the problem statement, one of the kids is a boy, so the two girl scenario did not happen. There are three cases left, in two of which one child is a girl. This means that the desired probability that the other child in the family is a girl is two-thirds, or 67%. This is how structured thinking and decision trees work. They are the art of creating tree diagrams to decompose problems according to certain requirements. I'll talk about the requirements in a moment. Another example. Suppose there is a set of metrics by which we want to track the team performance. How do we roll them out in our team? There are dozens of details to consider. How do we visualize the metrics for the team members and for the managers? How do we compute their values automatically? Will the team members fill out additional reports or not? There are problems with the level of access for different systems to data for calculation. Add to that tight deadlines and lots of inter-team and inter-departmental interaction and you get a mess. And then comes structured thinking. Hocus pocus! Hocus pocus here means a slightly longer chain of actions than in the previous example, which we will omit for now. And we get a tree which decomposes the original question into several levels of sub-questions, answers to which will help solve the original question. This tree is not a one-size-fits-all template, but a tool that adapts to the features of the problem, the success criteria, the stakeholders, and so on. You don't need to memorize it, you rebuild it as needed. Here's another example of a decision tree. That's a blueprint for the model of the UK office printers value-added resellers market that I developed some time ago at McKinsey. Again, same logic. I decompose the complex subject into several layers of simpler elements. Each element is estimated separately. Then I aggregate the elements into the initial subject and I get the desired result. Okay, and a more fun example. The owl yet again. This time, by the way, the owl drawing depicts the principle of structured thinking correctly. How do you learn to grow decision trees? Firstly, simply starting to break things down into components is already a big step forward. Practice on everyday questions. Where to have lunch? What college or what company to choose? In how many years can you retire? Is buying a new car worth it? And so on. As you practice, thinking structurally will become easier. Secondly, Clearly define the problem, the success criteria, the solution space, limitations, and the stakeholders. The better you understand the context, the better you can tailor your decision tree to your unique problem. Thirdly, keep an eye on the requirements. Choose the right type of the structure – a formula, a funnel, a table, or an outright tree. 
make sure its branches are mutually exclusive, collectively exhaustive, focused on the main question, relevant and detailed enough to be useful. I teach decision trees in my Critical Thinking for Technological Leaders course. If you want to learn to make better decisions as a product owner, a team leader and executive, feel free to contact me via the link in the description. And fourthly, iterate and discuss your decision trees with your team and experts. A decision tree is like a real tree, it grows stronger over time, so invest time in refining it and bear fruit. Let's call it a day. Thanks for watching the video. If you have colleagues who are interested in critical thinking, please send them a link to this video. They will appreciate. See you later. Cheers.